Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers and you're joining me here today, hopefully live, um, to make our Mr. and Mrs. Tomte complete with um, putting the hat properly into the right colour, um, giving Mr. Tomte the beard and Mrs. Tomte the little plaited piggy tails and um, we've got to make feet and we got as far as attaching the arms uh, last time. So I'm going to um, do Mr. Tomte's arms, attaching them again so that you can see um, how that is done, just to refresh your memory or maybe you haven't had a chance to catch up. I am following the instructions to the word and they are, of course are in our Mr. and Mrs. Tomte uh, pack. If, if you are watching this live, as I said, um, this is the point where I always have to remind myself of a date. So. Let me just think quickly. 26th of October. This is live at one o'clock on YouTube. And if you want to re-watch this, you can do this on Thursday, the 28th of October at 7 p.m. over on um, Facebook. I usually have somebody helping me um, during the live streams. And today I've got Alicia here with me. So thank you, Alicia. And let's just have a quick look who is here today. Because if you... Um, Watching this for the first time, you might not know that there is always a, um, a giveaway during the live streams on Tuesday and on Thursday. If you're watching this any other time after the 26th of October, the 28th of October, even an hour too late, then all of this obviously is not the case anymore. However, the tutorial stays on our YouTube channel and you can watch this anytime um, at your own leisure or when you need it. So we've here um, today, we've got Marion in the house. Hello, Marion. Uh, just going to make a quick sandwich and then I will be ready to settle down with you all. Lovely. Ashley is there. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Bridget. Um, hi, Alicia, Steffi and Fluff friends. She says, hi. Gina is there. Hello, Gina. Um, Jane is there. Sandra is there. Rachel is there. And, um, oh no, with, with Daniel, who's feeling a bit poorly. Oh, I hope you're all right. Um, and then we've got Diane, uh, Melanie is there, Claire, Catherine. Um, she's catching up from finish um, on finishing off from last week, so you've got a bit of time there. Michael is there, Diana is there, um, Donna, and another Donna. And um, that's oh yes, Donna. Donna is from the other Donna. Um, is from. Um, already forgotten that again she's from the US but I've forgotten what KY stands for God, my brain is like a sieve um yes <clears throat> let's move on I'm, I know I know what it is ah it's really annoying me now okay right um so the if you um I've got the boxes still here I think I might have where have I put the boxes uh well anyway the book the Tom could Tom to came into big came in big boxes Mr and Mrs Tomte well I think I must have put them away but um left out I've taken out of it what uh, we still need so for miss for Mrs Tomte we have got um her beautiful mohair um tops which will be turned into um plaited hair Kentucky that's it thank you Alicia and Mr Tomke is getting um an ever so slightly graying beard it could also be dyed like fashionable platinum um gray and then uh, we've got gray left for his feet and we've got the variegated deep red variegated left for his hat for Mrs Tomke we have got the uh, poppy red and um for her we have got the Gotland um lamb gray slightly lighter color and um as I said, this is Mrs. Tumter so far. She's looking terrible. <laughs> At this point, she looks terrible. But I've seen some amazing um, ones that look much better than this one. And um, with with little details, um, Alicia's put red details on her dress so that it looks like it's got like um, um, like a, a sort of a theme running across there. It looks really beautiful. And um, yeah, so <laughs> and her, these boobs are a bit big on her. And then... Um, Mr. Tomter looks like this at the moment and this is where I'm going to start um, up again by attaching the arms. But before I do this, I'm going to tell you what's up for um, competition today. And um, that is it. So today's price is a toolbox on the go. If you haven't gone, got one yet, you must. It's an essential. So you can win yourself one here today. Um, and all we want you to tell us, leave your 
leave your comments um, in, in the comments, in the running comments. And if you had a tomta at your home or garden, what would you like them to do to help you? So bearing in mind that the story of the tomta is that they're usually quite... Um, quite jovial and um, and kind and caring as long as you give them porridge at Christmas so um, you could take this either way you could tell us what your tomta is doing for you because you left him um, porridge and you could um, you could also say that that's what you would like him to do but he's actually doing something entirely different because you haven't left any porridge so it's entirely up to you and the the toolbox looks a little bit like this so on um, it has got removable boxes and um, the one that you will get has got compartments in one side I've only got one side here because the other one I'm using but they slide out all of this is made in the UK and these boxes are recyclable as well so if you don't need them anymore you happen to break it um, who knows can it can happen the nice thing is you can carry it away um, because you can have all these boxes ready packed depending on what craft you're doing or where you're going or what you might need and um, we've, we've made a big fuss of these toolboxes on the go um, because we first stocked them just as we were going into lockdown, which of course nobody was going anywhere. So um, you might have carried it from the bedroom to the sitting room, but you can now actually go to places. So this is maybe where you want to put your um, your felting tools because you're going to a friend's house to have a bit of fun, or maybe you're putting something else in there entirely, whether you, maybe you do other crafts and maybe you've got completely different ideas what to do with it. But um, this is basically what you can um, get yourself here during the live stream and we of course sell them on our website as well right let's go overhead um to have a look at mr tomto who's at the moment armless i have made his two arms um well sort of made his two arms i felted them i've felted this part really flat here and now i'm just going to put the hands on there for which i need a little bit of gray if you remember we split the gray into four parts four equal parts two for the feet and then two for the hands so that's my parts here and um all all i all you do is you wrap this around his um the end of the arm wrap it nicely and then take your felting needle and stab it so that the green disappears inside the gray and you've given him magically little gray mittens on the end of his arms and then you obviously do that on the other side as well um, for some reason I've just um, taken a fine needle which is not what I had planned to do there let's try that oh gosh that's even finer sorry I'm not uh, paying much attention to the needles I'm picking up that's still a fine needle. What on earth is going on? Okay, I will find my coarse needle. Just bear with me. I've got all all kinds of needles, but I have them before they've been um, the tip the tips have been coloured in. Um, actually, I'm using a twisted medium needle now. If um, if you haven't got any, um, if you don't know about our needles, then um, you can find a very useful list of all the needles we do on our website um, under the felting needle section and we colour in the tops of the needles ourselves. So if you if you buy needles from us, then they will be absolutely consistent. If you want to get more medium twisted needles, for example, then you go for the purple um, top that has been um, coloured in. Now, I don't know if you remember last um, week, I had um, the pleasure, or we ha all had the pleasure of listening to the hedge being cut. Um, I think somebody's out there on the ride on, on the lawnmower. So hopefully that will not be a permanent fix fixture. They do know that I need a bit of silence here, but work goes on on the maintenance of the site here, of course. Right. So to speed this up a little bit, I'm actually going to my three needle felting tool because this is something that we were doing last week and I'm only doing it um, to um, show you what we finished off with last week. It's a bit of a recap, if you like, and, um, and then we move on to what we're actually doing today. I hope you've all had um, sort of a nice weekend. It, it was my birthday, as many of you know, and it's the time of the year that... Uh, and. Uh, I really I wish my birthday was in the summer I really I I am definitely a summer person and the, the thing is and that is without fail every year and it has never been any different but come um sort of the towards the end of October 
um, it is autumn. There's just no way around it. You get away with maybe calling it still summer, even at the beginning of October. But as soon as you get part, over halfway in October, it is definitely um, autumn. And I can't say I like it very much. But anyway, that's just my preference. Right, here are the arms now. Now, they, they can't really be very long, the arms. So if you have to attach them further up, even on um, even if it goes in the head, remember, this will be covered with a hat. But if it bothers you, just take a bit of the wool off. This is all felted, so it looks a little bit strange. And um, just felt that flat down again. And then you can attach the arm um, according to the length that you need. Now you can stab that straight in and then cover it with um, a little bit of green wool that you will have left over from covering the body there. And then we do that on the other side as well. You can shape the arms later if you want them to sort of have a slight dent here in the elbow. You can still do that. It's got a bit of a white patch there, but I'm not too worried about it at the moment because a lot will happen when the beat, the beat, the beard is going. Ah, oh, this one is definitely not definitely well felted. Okay, so if you felted something really well, this will will put you make you completely gasp. Now you can cut things off. <laughs> this is what I love about needle felting. You can tease the fibers out again. Just tease a few fibers out because you do need some fibers to attach to the side of the body. Flatten it and attach it accordingly, making sure he's got that at the same sort of position as the one on the other side. Stab it in and job done. And then cover it over with a little bit of green if you like. And felt that down. Yes, so often the question I get often asked is, what do you do if you have attached something and you don't want it anymore? Well, you pull it off. What if you've made the arm too long? Well, you can also cut it off. If you've got a, um, the, the, the thing that happens is when you cut wool is that you end up with um, really tiny, tiny short fibers because obviously the wool is uh, different lengths already, but um, it's actually the same length, but it's not all in the same place. So when you cut it, you end up with tiny, tiny short fibers and uh, with, with other length fibers. And so you just have to make sure that these tiny, tiny, almost dust like short fibers aren't... Um, um, don't look weird. So right, here's Mr. Tompton now. And um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to look at the instructions because that's always uh, good, especially in my case. And um, what comes next is, oh, eyes. Let's do the eyes. So in your pack, if you if you have got your pack from us, you get a little, little paper bag in there, which has got, ta-ta, eyes. And we love these um, glue-in eyes. They're they're basically a bead, a flat bead on a on a um, um, on a what do you call it pin. And um, now you can do two things. You can use an awl if you have an awl, or you can use your needle to poke a hole. I don't. I I have got an awl, but I can't see it here right now. So I'm going to use a a needle. And the eye sits basically in that almost in that sort of uh, bit between the nose and the cheek make a hole, go all the way in. Once you're all the way in, only when you're all the way in, give it a bit of a jiggle, then pull it out. You can actually see the hole there quite clearly. Insert the eye. Oh, hello. He's there with one eye at least. And then do the other one in exactly the same way. Only jiggle the needle when you, when it's all the way in, otherwise you'll break it off. That would be such a shame if you've got a broken off needle inside his head. And then put the other eye in and you've got two little eyes looking at you. Now, instead of um, taking them out again to fasten them on with glue, you actually leave them in there. And all you're going to do is add a dab of glue behind the eyes. We do this the same with all of our um, um, creatures or whatever that have got eyes. And that's all it takes to, um, to fasten the eyes in now. And you can just leave it to dry. Um, the, glue, the glue that I'm using is this glue stick. We love these. They have a really fine nozzle and um, the glue dries completely clear. It's actually a PVA glue. It's nothing nothing special in terms of glue. And I'm going to do straight away, I'm going to do Mrs. Tompter as well. Open the other set of eyes and do this now as well. Now remember, if you're watching this, whether this is live or 
whether you um, are watching this afterwards, um, please do give us the thumbs up on, on this particular um, tutorial. And also, if you have not done so, please subscribe to our channel because um, that would be amazing. We're so, so very, very close to 4,000 um, subscribers and um, we, would, we would love you to, um, to be one of the ones that is making that happen. And again, glue behind the eyes and then glue behind that eye as well. Now with a glue stick, you um, it has actually got a lid that's sort of slightly offset. You have to make sure that you put it on properly so that the the end of the nozzle um, is properly sealed and the glue can't run out and, um, and then dry out. She just needs a little bit of a facial correction here. And that now has attached the eyes on both of them. So I'm going to um, go over to Mr. Tompter again and I'm going to give him his beard now. And before I do that, I will just have a little um, a little look at uh, what people are commenting and, um, and see how things are going. Right. Uh, oh, lots of comments coming in. So, oh, lots of people have joined as well. Erica is there now. Um, Oh, I'm missing all this conversation. You're such a chatty lot. Uh, oh, I think I've read. Um, oh, love the little wreath. Yeah, right. This is one of the live streams that is coming up, but it's one of the pre-recorded live stream streams because I will actually be away. And so take note of... Um, it is the 9th of November is where I will be showing you how to make these mini wreaths. And it's one one of those, uh, what we call a stash buster. So you can um, you can use your own stash. All you need is a pipe cleaner. It doesn't even have to be um, a special pipe cleaner. A pipe cleaner, a bit of ribbon, a bit of blue wool, a bit of white wool, and then just wisps of green, brown, and red, and you're in business. As simple as that. So um, it doesn't even have to be these exact colors. As it happens, I can tell you what we've used on here, and that is the Aqua Mountain Sheep and the bleached Australian white, um, Australian merino white. And then uh, for the for the little green bits, uh, it's the forest green, it's the poppy red, and then the brown is um, the Portuguese merino. And actually, I've also put a bit of black in there, which is the dyed New Zealand merino. So that's that's all you need to make um, a wreath decoration like this. And um, obviously, it's not huge quantities. So you can probably, even if you don't have enough of the blue and the white, because that's completely um, all the way through blue and all the way through white, you can um, use a core wool and then cover it with the color that you want afterwards. Takes a little bit longer, but it's not a big deal. Um, yes, yeah, so that was a, a distraction there that I didn't... Um, um, okay, uh, right, here we go. If I had a tomter at home, says Sandra, I would like them to sort out my clutter for me. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I would like them. I, I think for me it was would be like a daily chore because um, as soon as it's sorted, I have my children make it all cluttery again. Um, oh, Susan is from Florida. Oh, we've got lots of people from um, the other side of the big pond. Um, Donna says, Mr. Tomter could help out with protecting my wool stash and felted creatures from bracken. Bracken is Donna's dog, by the way. The Tomter uh, would growl at Bracken if he tried to touch anything woolly. Oh, a growling Tomter. That's a good, that's a good image. I hope my Tomter will help me raise funds for breast cancer with my crafting. That's a lovely idea. Well, he could already do that. Maybe if you make lots of them, he could sell them in aid of breast cancer. Alex says, um, sending out beautiful, positive thoughts throughout the house. I think that's what Mr. Tomto or maybe Mrs. Tomto does or either. Um, and Alicia is delighted because there's so many fellow Americans there. Diana says, my Tomto could have all the porridge he wanted every day of the year if he could clear the jungle that is our garden. Oh, he would definitely be able to do that. Um, our Tomto finds all of our lost household items, socks, keys, etc. and brews, endless cups of tea. Such a treasure. Yeah, I would like endless cups of teas. I would definitely like to know where there's a couple of keys that are forever lost. And um, I have no idea what happens to socks. So I'm now wondering whether I've got naughty Tomto in my house. Um, 
Catherine says, I've asked Mr. Tom to, if he would mind helping me check my tent over before I go camping in a few weeks' time. You're going camping at this time of the year. Is this in this country? Well, you're brave. I, I have got lots of camping um, stories to tell where I, I, it could put you off of camping forever. Um, yeah, I would ask my Tom to, to help watch over my chickens, keeping them safe from stray cats and foxes that venture into my garden. What do the chick what do the cats do with your chickens? Um our cats usually don't mind chickens. Um Diana says happy birthday. Oh thank you, um Diana. Um I did have a good day, thank you. And Melanie says, Oh thank you, everybody's talking about my birthday now. I need my Mr and Mrs. Tomto to help with my housework, says Karen. Then I can carry on felting. Good idea. Donna um, says, Mr. Tom, this is this is the other Donna from the US. Mr. Tom to keep the garden clean and bug free. Mrs. Tom to keep the yard happy and beautiful. They get porridge three times a day for a great job. <laughs> Gina says, I would love my Tom to, to help me get a few jobs done around the garden so I could catch up with some more felting. I would provide all the porridge they could eat. I have a feeling there might be a, a Tom to migration from um, Norway to um, to everywhere else in the world if there's tom if there's porridge to be had three times a day not just once a year um, i might get uh, into trouble with all the norwegians michael says i would get my tom to, to help me with backlog of felting kits yeah well you don't want him to do that you just enjoy it yourself hi everyone from a wet and windy auburn oh wow okay um this is scotland right am i am i right um, Marion says, I don't mind the squirrels having a share of the bird food. Um, <laughs> no animals at Tom to work were harmed in the making of this video. Absolutely not. It's acupuncture, Tom to acupuncture. Julie says, I would like my Tom to help me with the, with uh, the, some of the house cleaning so we can then sit down together with a lovely bowl of Deluxe porridge. Vampire Venom says, distracted by a big palette of units for me here now. Here now though, well, I think I think um, I think um, Vampire Venom. I think you will like the next, not the next fairy, but the one after. I say no more. It's the fireworks fairy, but she has a bit of a gothic look to her, so I think you might like her. Um, so uh, Vampire Venom says I wouldn't force them, but I'd like my Tom to, to deal with the next door's cats leaving leavings leavings or oh, leavings okay those those kind of gifts um, um as since i've not been grounded by the government i can't keep on top and it means my housemate won't cut the lawn since i've not been grounded oh i see okay so you're out and about again you're not at home anymore i get it now sorry that was a bit slow in the uptake i want my tom to, to take care of the hedgehogs through the winter says erica Jane says, after eating porridge together for breakfast, I would like Mr. Thompson to sit by my side and help me calm. Oh, that's nice. Um, oh, C. Joy says, Choi, my Thompson would accompany me on walks te to, and teach me to forage and not poison myself picking dangerous mushrooms. Um... Oh, yeah, that's right. So I, I was right. Oban is the ferry port for Mal, so I know it well. Oh, so we have two people um, from the Isle of Mal. Who was that again now in Oban? Oh, Julie. Do you know each other? Julie and... Um, I, I know this sounds probably a bit patronising, but I imagine the Isle of Mal is not, not that big. You might, be, you might know each other. Do you know each other? I need to know this. Right. Okay, so we're going to Mr. Tomter and we're giving him a beard now. So he... Um, that's always a good thing to add to any Tom to is a beard. Right, you've got this beautiful um, grey. This is a natural grey. This is not dyed, believe it or not. Sheep actually produce this. And you split the length of your light grey tops in half to make two shorter strands. So this is a... I'm actually going to do this on the big camera because this is a bit of a, of a tip. If you're trying to split a wool top and you do this, you can be a Michelin man or a world champion in in strength like you could be a strong man or a strong woman you're not going to do it and I'm really pulling hard however if you hold further away from from the part that you want to split in half now watch this half watch in the middle and you counter intuitively softly pull I know that makes no sense whatsoever the wool will just slither away from each other Oh, this, I love this so much. And now you've got two shorter lengths. So this is a um, this is a bit of a... Look at this, how soft this is. This is a bit of a, 
um, a tip on how to split wool tops. And then you take uh, one of these and split the width of it in half. So now we've, we've made it half long and now we're making it half wide. So you have this in half and, um, and this in half. And then we have this in half and this in half. And then you take one of these. Um, oh yeah, we've done that. You will now have um, three sections. Oh, uh, only one. We're only splitting one in half. So we've got one. Sorry, I was uh, off with Mrs. Tompter then. We have one thicker one and two slimmer ones. So that's what we've got now. And then you fold your first thinner strand in half to create a shorter, thicker piece. So this is the this is the thinner one. I'm gonna fold this in half there. And now I'm going to go overhead. Okay. So now this this is sort of the side cover of the beard. So I'm now um I've, this is the half that I've folded, obviously. So it's two two long um, um aligned strands there. And now I'm going to felt this onto Mr. Tomte for his beard. And it needs to go right where you imagine under his ears, so to speak. So the hat will cover everything else after that, and all the white, and it will go right down to the gray. So that, that's how high it needs to be. You could even put it a bit higher, and then the hat doesn't need to go so low. But either way, it will be fine. So felt this on and then obviously you're leaving the rest hanging free and then you're going to do this on the other side with the same <clears throat> thinner strand folded in half and felt it on so that it, it covers the side part of Mr. Tomte. Again you might have to look at that um, front, from the front in a minute to make sure yeah that looks about right that it's um, in the same in the same place, mirror imaging the other side. And then, so now you've got Mr. Tomte with um, um, a strange looking beard here, and then you're going to use the thicker strand and you split that, you fold this over, you're not splitting it. In fact, because I split it, it's now, it doesn't want to stay together anymore, but that was a mistake. So I've laid it on top of each other. And then you're gonna add that onto the remaining part that needs covering, felt it down so that it, it melts into the sides like that. And you have to really, really make sure that you felt into that um, folded edge. Don't Otherwise that, that, that won't be fastened on and that will be the first thing that falls off or comes loose. Felt it on nicely. There. Now you've got a beard and all you need to do now is rearrange it so that the, the two um, sides and the middle part will all sort of melt into one. So just give it a bit of a of a makeover if you like. Ah, see, see there's a bit that I haven't felt it and that will be the one that's going to come off. So make sure you have the whole um, you have that whole strand felted on, even if you have to um, put some of it up. The reason why that hasn't felted on mine is because I split that accidentally. I didn't mean to split um, it in half. It was meant to stay the thicker strand. So now you've got the beard fastened on and you just need to arrange it a little bit so that it becomes nice, nice um, and um, one part of it all together. There you go. And that is the beard done. So I'm going to go now to Mrs. Tomte and I'm going to give her her plaits. If you need to shorten the beard later, you can do this by holding on to all of what you felt it on and just keep taking off little wispy ends consistent, consistently and that will shorten the beard. But at the moment, um, you don't need to worry about that. We can do that at the very end. And remember, there's going to be feet poking out underneath here as well. Right, let's um, have a look at Mrs. Tompter. So Mrs. Tompter, obviously she doesn't have a beard yet. She might when she gets older. Um, we now need <coughs> to give her her, her hair. So you split your more hair top, this one here, into four equal lengths of about 10 to 12 centimeters. Same principle. Um, you you want to take, let the wool split itself there, 
roughly four equal parts. That's it. And then you split the strand into three sections. Um, oh no, I need to skip, uh, skip um, double up two of these to make one thicker strand. Okay, there, that's one, that's one thicker strand and another thicker strand. And now you've got the thicker strand and now you need to split that into three to plait the hair, to plait it basically. Um, so, but before this, you are actually going to felt this onto the side of her head first. So felt this on, it doesn't really genuinely matter what it looks like under the hat. Just get it felted on there so that you've got um, a resistance when you start plaiting the hair. Even if you've got to felt it into her head, just get it on there one way or another um, just so that you've got it fastened on and you don't have to worry about pulling it off when you're plaiting her lovely plaits. So just get it on. And then you've got your, if you haven't got split it, if you haven't split it into three parts yet, then you can do this now. So you need to have one and two and three. And now you're going to plait her hair whilst it's on there. Hopefully you know how to plait, that would, would definitely help. You can keep it quite softly plaited or you can make it very tight tight that's entirely up to you if you keep it softer then it looks thicker if you make it really tight then it looks thinner there we go plait it all the way down all the way down all the way down down to the how far ever far you want to go there and then um to close it up just felt that part shut for a minute so it doesn't pop open. Can't do that with real hair. There, and then take a tiny little bit of uh, red wool from her hat, wool, and then wrap it around the end of her plait. So it looks like she's got a, um, what's it called again, an elastic around her hair and just stab that in all around so that it's secure. And then you can cut the ends off. Now you don't have to do that, but, um, and then she's got a little plait here by the side of her head. Now remember the hat will go down to here, so the plait will pop out from under her, her hat. So you've got a nice neat plait here on one side now. And then you repeat that on the other side, so you can watch me do that again. If you've got a longer end here, you could tease that out and lay it on top again. Fasten it on, either split it into um, three parts already or get it on first and then split it. In the instructions it says you split it first, but you, it's not essential that you do that. Fasten it on, make sure you get a nice strong fastening on there, whether you let the hair, and I say her hair um, on purpose because this more hair top is actually hair, it's not wool. The more hair goat uh, produces hair, it's not classed as well. Felt it on so you've got your nice like strong stronghold there and then um, plait it into the plait here. Try and do this as close to the other side in terms of looks and positioning um, as you can. Um, get down to the very end of it. This one's slightly shorter, I think, which is fine because you can just compare it when it's hanging down. Yeah, that's fine. Felt the end so that it doesn't pop open. Take a little bit of red, the red hat wool, wrap it around the ends and felt that in as well. If your plaits are uh, shorter than these, for whatever reason, then you might not want to cut the ends off, but mine are actually quite long, so I'm cutting the ends off. So she's got another set of plaits here, by the other side of her head. She's got all this wispy stuff sticking up here. 
and um, you can felt that down. So we haven't spoken about the Advent project very much because um, because we, we we were actually sold out and we've, we've delayed um, the posting out of it because there were so many people who said that they had missed out. And so we put um, more into stock and all of them have gone as well. So um, yes, they so to, to answer the question that somebody asked, it will be posted out um, early next week. If we don't manage it this week, it will be posted early next week. Uh, we're definitely giving the um, overseas um, um, buyers priority but you will definitely have it in good time for opening your first of advent envelope on the 28th of november how exciting is that right there's mrs tomta now she's got her uh, piggy tails mr tomta has his beard so all we need to do next to make them look more complete is cover their hats um, i'm just gonna um, have a little look what else is happening so next live streams next week tuesday is the seal um, that will be on a day when I'm getting ready to go to a show, so it'll be a pre-recorded live stream. Nothing will change as far as you're concerned. Um, Alicia will be hosting it um, here um, on YouTube as well as on um, Facebook. And then the week after is the mini wreath that everybody's looking forward to. And then the week after that is the Christmas elf, which will be, um, will be pre-recorded by Sophie. We have still got spaces available for our winter retreat. Um, you can make a dragon during that retreat with our help, tuition support, moral support, wine support, food support, cuddle support, um, fluff support, anything you like. And um, and that um, is, is ready um, ready for you to book onto now if you email us at info at the makers um, with two s's.co.uk and um, the prices are per person and you can share a room um, to bring the price down as well. And then um, we've also got workshops available now to book on, which is with Sophie Wheatley. She's uh, an expert in pet portraits or portraits of animals as such. So we've got two weekends on offer. One is the one where you can actually make a pet portrait of your own pet, whether that is a cat, dog, guinea pig, hamster, whatever you've got. Um, Obviously, you will have to bring photos. You don't need to bring your pet. Please don't bring your pet. Um, and then um, on the second weekend, it's the wild. It's a wild animal picture. So if you want to make um, something out of nature, out of the wild, then uh, that is possible on the sixth next weekend. And um, whilst we're at it, the cats protection um, warble kits are still available to purchase. If you go onto the cats.org.uk forward slash craft for cats website, you can buy your bauble kit for twenty pounds, and half of those, uh, half of that money goes directly to cats protection. The other half helps us send the kit out, and there will be a live tutorial um, on the twenty seventh of November on Facebook. But if you're not on Facebook, you can also still watch it uh, later. There will be a link sent to you where that um, tutorial is available, and then. Whilst we're at it, the butterfly co um, conservation workshop kit is also available to purchase now. These, by the way, these would make great Christmas presents if you're stuck um, what to get to for a loved one or if you want it for Christmas and you and people always ask you, what do you want, what do you want, and you don't know what to say. Now is your chance. Get people buying you these and then you can uh, have something to look forward to, especially, especially with the Red Admiral, something to look forward to in what can often be a dreary and... Um, and grey um, January and that is on the 20th of uh, January and the same same principle in that there will be a live stream um, yes that's it I do have another one that I can add into the equation and that is that as of the 4th of November not long you can get your dog's trust kit as well and that makes a little curled up dog similar to this there so if you um I've only got um, sort of a slightly larger version here with me today, but um, that is in aid of the Dogs Trust. Similar, exactly the same, £20 as well. The kit will be available to buy from the Dogs Trust. Watch out, um, they're launching it on the 4th of November, so I can't give you a link just yet. But I do know that the actual workshop is on the 9th of December, and that is an evening one from 7 until 8.30, and I will be running that one as well. Exciting, all this stuff um, happening. Right. 
Um, I'm going now to color in for the hat. Now this can, is, can potentially be a bit of a, a boring session. So I'm going to do it whilst I fill, um, fill the space with lots of news if I can think of it and maybe even looking at um, some of the comments that are coming through. But it's really important that you start out right. And for this, you take a pinch of, oh, I better check my instructions. Yes, about one third. That's about one third um, of your of the hat color. So you're obviously using the poppy red for Mrs. Tomter and the deep red variegated for Mr. Tomter. And now what you want to make sure is that it the hat slouches over the face. So to do this, you have to fold in your wool bat so you get a nice neat edge there. And then you're putting this onto the hat in the direction of how the fibers run. So it's already, you can see it's already a hat. Put it on there and then you are um, gonna use your felting needle and stab it into the, um, the slightly pointed white um, core that you've got underneath first. Remember also I told you at this point you can extend the hat and make it a lot longer. So just get it on first. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to, to continue stabbing into the um, the red wool here, but um, you're going to stay as much away from stabbing straight into that edge as you possibly can. So you're going you're stabbing closer to the edge now, but you're not um, you're not going into the edge. You've got to find these eyes again because they need to poke out. So um, whilst we want the hat to slouch, we don't want to lose the um, the eyes. So make sure that you find the eyes and slightly felt into the hat so that the edge re retreats from the eyes there and felt that down. If at any point you've got a bit of a line here as I have, just take a wisp of your red wool, lay it over that line and it will just literally disappear there. So now you've got to do this all the way around the head, the top of the head, and you've got to be really, really, um, um, disciplined with the fact that you have to cover up anything that isn't part of um, part of the tomta that is meant to be visible. So felt this on first. You can notice that I'm not concentrating too much getting the wool along the top of the hat. I want to get the edge around the head first. I want to get that right first. Um, that could mean that you start stabbing a lot around here and, and the hat becomes sort of quite bulging. If that is the case, then obviously just use uh, the single needle or the multi-tool and just felt it down again into the right shape. Otherwise, it might sort of, um, you might freak a little bit when it looks very different. So try and keep the shape going, but it's not so important that it's all smoothly felted down. And then you're going to do this... Um, um, uh, but do not felt around the edge down yet. Spread the wool over the core shape as you go. You can use, okay, we've, um, so you can already expand the hat um, by going longer here at the top, but you can also do that in a minute. And then you take the half of the real remaining red wool and cover, cover the back of the hat as per the front. So tease your wool out, fold the edge down, lay it over the part that needs, and this is when I say you need to be disciplined. It means that you really need it to touch the green. You don't want it up here. That won't do, okay? You have to have it right down on her um, on her body and felt that down with the edge slightly bulging and, and sort of um, have a nice neat edge there and then tease it along the, the tip of the hat, felt it down. You still got red wool left, so this is not um, by any means finished. You've just done the front and you've done the back, and um, and you can sort of um, let the two sides join together. But you can also add another little piece on there. If it becomes wispy, then do stop in between that space of the red. Um, edge of the hat and what and and the shape underneath so you're literally stabbing into that space and that will clear uh, make a very clear edge again and then work your way around um, I think I'm going to have to put a little bit more wool on the side here because it's not reaching it's not reaching all the way around 
tease that, fold my edge over. It's the same all the time. So just stick to the stick to that um, technique, and then um, it will all be fine. And if you've lost the eyes, don't worry. We'll get them back. We'll felt the hat um, along the um, along the eyes a little bit away from the eyes even. But make sure that you've got that hat nice and low on the head so that you have nothing showing but the piggy tails, the green body and the face. That's all you need to have showing with um, Mrs. Tomte. You can use your um, three needle felting tool if you've got one. Speeds things up a bit. Oh, I'm just going to stab in there. And um, if you don't know this, but next week I'm actually off to the um, Creative Craft Show in Birmingham. It's a really sort of middle point for people who live in the UK to come and see us. Um, we will be running workshops. There's 16 people in the workshop and I run one workshop a day. And the, the workshops that I am running, um, if, if you really like that mini wreath, you can actually come and I teach you how to, um, to do it and you get your workshop kit that has got everything in it to make the re mini wreath as well. And um, that's one of the workshops. I'm going to do a small tomte. And um, um, what else am I doing? A robin bauble at the workshop. And there's one more. Oh, yeah, the curly hedgehog. No, not the curly hedgehog. That's gone. Forget that. Um, not the curly hedgehog. It is a robin bauble little tomte. Oh, it's a mini Santa. That's right. Curly hedgehog is not in that program anymore. So you can see that I'm slowly but surely shaping the hat now, um, going up a little bit more now that I've got my edge pretty sorted. So to bring the, um, the eyes out, you could just sort of tuck the wool up a bit, the red wool, and then um, expose the eyes, but leave the rest of the hat slouching around it. So that sort of brings the eyes out. And um, now, from now on, it's just a consistent stabbing into the red wool, shaping it um, along the top. Now, I will show you how you ex extend the hat. So at the moment, this is the white and this is the red. So you can um, almost sort of paint your hat longer. So I've just got to cover in that little white bit, bit here. You can extend the hat now. This is, by the way, this is the same method for Mr. and Mrs. Tomto. So obviously the same principle applies that you need to cover all of um, anything that with Mr. Tomto. I'm just going to show you this on him here. So you've got to um, make sure that the hat goes, oh look, there's a bit of a bold patch there. Go all the way. I mean, if you do have a bold patch, it's really not difficult to cover it up. Just take a bit of red, stab it in. Oh, we've got Pam Duffy in the house as well. Hi, Pam. I actually can now say I've met you, which is amazing. Um, yeah, that was so nice to actually see you in person. It just adds that missing puzzle piece somehow. So um, so you can see that with Mr. Tomter, you go all the way down to the green, all the way around on touching, touching the face and then also touching the beard. So... The, the only things that the only thing that red wool should be touching is green, gray or white with the with the hair with Mrs. Tomter and the and the pink. You should not see any white that was underneath. All of the white is completely covered up now, not not visible, not there anymore. And to make the hat a little bit longer, extend the red that you're putting on beyond the white um, hat inside. So that you don't need a lot of wool because you're not building bulk. You're just making a slightly longer tip here. So um, as you did before, when you felt it, the, ha um, the inside of the hat, just go past, almost past the actual red um, and turn this and stab it from all sides. When you um, get... When you have the white inside and you stab, it could be that you're having little white fibers coming through on the other side, but where you've only got red because you've got beyond the white, that shouldn't happen. Um, you don't need a three needle felting tool to do this, by the way. I'm just doing this for speed. You can use a single needle. Works absolutely fine. Might even work better. 
you can be a little bit more concentrated in where you're going. I am stabbing this into my earth mat here um, because that will make that nice pointy edge. This is, um, like I said last time, this is something that I didn't realize, but lots of people struggle to get this pointy edge and it's because you've got to go um, right to the end of the last fibers and beyond sometimes just to um, make sure that that is where your needle concentrates the most. And um, so you get a nice pointy hat here. Now this needs needle felting down a lot more, um, but I don't want to go over time. So what I will do is I am not going to show you how to do Mr. Tompter's hat because it's exactly the same. And so if you're, if you're already working on Mr. Tompter, then it is the same. If you are um, making both, then you won't be doing this all in one session anyway. So this will is the same principle. But what I will show you is how to make the feet. And again, that's the same on both um, as well. So um, there you go. So this is the, um, I'm going to go on the big screen now so that I can show you here now. So it's a hat that goes straight up at the moment, but then of course you can give it, um, you can shape the hat itself as well. So to do this, you could just hold it in the shape that you want it to be to start with and see, you know, where, where there's all the sort of these little fluffy bits that are starting to stick out and then um, felt into the areas around it. So you can actually um, sculpt it as you're holding it. That will already have made a difference now. See, it stays down. But it also means that if you haven't felted the hat down as much yet as I have, you might find that there are sort of creases and bulges happening. So that, that will allow you to take care of those as you're shaping the hat a little bit more. I really like it when their hats are touching and it's almost like they form a heart shape. It's another opportunity to felt the wool down more onto um, the white core and shape it. And you, what you will have seen me do is, and I've been really consistent with this, I, I've only ever stuck the needle either from the top, from the bottom up or from the top down. And, and that sort of determines the shaping of the hat becoming that tapered shape. Um, so I'm not going round like this. I'm actually going top down or bottom up. Um, and uh, just to remind you, just so that you can see it again, if you have um, not a, such a clear edge with the hat, then just stab into the space, the space between the hat and whatever it's touching, whether that is the the pink skin or whether it's the piggy tail or the beard in Mr. Tompter's case, or the green body cover. Just work your way around it and literally stab into the space between the two shapes meeting and the two colors meeting and that will make the edge clearer if for whatever reason you can't manage that then repeat the process of what i've shown you about take a wisp of wool fold it and lay it over the top and let the wool melt in together with the existing red and um, and make a newer more defined edge and that is sort of really all i can tell you about the the, the tips and tricks of how to get the um the hat looking like a like a great big hat that's actually sitting on top of the head rather than it's um, fused into the face or into the body of your tom tom. So she's um, pretty much um, ready. I will just show you something before I go away because this is my favorite part. If you have got a blusher, if you have a blusher and I've just bought a new one because it's got the most fantastic colors. Um, there, look at this. If you've got a blusher, then you can use this um, and um, you could you can use it either with your fingers or you can use it with a brush with a brush and you can give her rosy cheeks and you can give him rosy cheeks as well. I think that's such a nice thing to do. So um, you might have to put it on a bit more than you would normally and then you can blow at it and blow it off um, the excess powder that is. You can even give her a slight pink nose like she's been out in the cold there. I'm, I'm the only person in this room, so I am allowed to blow now. There you go. So she's got um, she's got sort of slightly rosy cheeks now. You can still felt it down afterwards if you've un unshevelled a bit of the um, yeah the wool, then you can felt it down again. It's not going to do any harm to the needle or the or the blushing color. So. 
there you go. But I want to show you how to do the feet. So you have got, for Mrs. Tomte, you used the lighter grey. For Mr. Tomte, you've got the darker grey. Um, I will just remind myself how to do it. Um, you should still, oh yeah, I said that already. Leave one end wispy and, and unfelted and shape the other end to be round. So you're basically doing this on the mat as you're going along. So just have this... Um, I'm, I've just folded it in a little bit to give me a good head start to have a nice round shape. Felting this flat on the mat. Now, when you felt anything flat on the mat, you know already what I'm going to say is you have to lift it off regularly, felt it from the other side, and keep folding in the wispy ends on the outside of this sort of flat foot. Turn it round. So the feet are quite flat because you don't want to build too much of a bulk underneath her body so um, because she needs to stand nice and nice and steady you can however stab into the sides a little bit to get that 3d effect a little bit more if you wish you make one keep these ends wispy because they are going to be crucial for attaching it to her and then um, do the other one the same so I, I folded it in initially felt it's flat on the mat keep lifting it off Get a nice sort of flat face going, flat base going, not a flat face, nothing to do with faces. Fold the wispy ends in as you're going along. I'm trying to sort of keep it rounded so you can, you can shape all of this by just using the needle on the mat. The only thing you've got to remember is that it gets stuck to it so you have to gently tease it off, turn it round and keep felting it hopefully into a similar, if not the same size and shape as the other one. They'll never be 100% identical, but that's fine. There we go. So I've got two flappy feet here now, and then you're going to fasten these onto her, turn her upside down as much as you dare. Now, the one thing you need to remember, do not fill in that cavity that you've tried to maintain um, because or, or, or felt it shut because you want to insert a stone in there. You could, however, insert the stone now if you want to give her a nice sort of heavy, heavy um, appearance or look. If, if for whatever reason that cavity isn't big enough, give it a big old um, pull and squeeze. You might even go and cut it a bit bigger with scissors or find a smaller stone. Um, either way, you can put the stone in there. What you have to do now, you've got to be mindful that you're not stabbing into the stone because that will definitely break your needle. So you either put that in now or do it later. It's That's entirely up to you. Whatever you do, do not stab into the stone. However, you could cr um, put the wool across the stone and stab it in on the other side and that will, you can hear the needle touching the stone, and that will um, hopefully help the stone to be um, held in place. This does not, this, it does not say this in the instructions. Um, so this is just an extra bit of tip I'm giving you. Felt the feet on, really be careful not to stab into the stone. Your needle will not like this, I'm telling you this now. So go past it and if you want that stone to be in there forever, then this is the way to do it. Um, if you if you want to be able to take it in and out, you can just insert it there, and then as long as you don't lift her up, it will probably not pop out. And then make sure that you have got a nice flat base still, so that she can stand up without falling over. And she's standing up. There she is. Right, ready to... Um, Say hello to you. She's got rosy cheeks. She's been out in the cold autumn winds. Um, or maybe Mr. Tompter has whispered her some niceties into her ears. And um, and there she is. She's all she's all ready. You can still do so much. I mean, you could still felt her rather large boobs down a bit. Whatever you're doing, I can feel um even up right up here that there's a stone inside. So be, be mindful of whatever you're felting, sort of anything below the, the nose and the, and the, well, the head, um, the stone's there. I can, as I'm stabbing into it, I can feel um, it's there. But the good thing is that the stone makes them that really satisfying heavy weight. So if you, if you like that um, to be the case, rather than the, the, the size sort of want, wants you to think they're heavy, but actually wool doesn't weigh that much. So um, it, it does give it that extra 
weighty feeling. It's really nice. And so don't don't go for too small a stone because you won't get that nice um, effect of the weight. And I feel like I really need to work a lot more on her on her boobs. Um, yeah, I've got, I think this is my third Mrs. Tomta I'm doing. So I, I feel like the first one I made, she had just the right size. But everybody's got different um, taste. So whatever size you fancy, that's what it is. And um, yeah, that's it basically. So there you go. Mrs. Tomta is definitely ready. Mr. Tomta and needs his hat still. I, I'm running out of time to do that during the live stream, but he looks quite sweet actually that way. But you can just imagine that he's got his hat now and um, and then obviously, where is he? This one here. Imagine I made that one. You have the same principle with the feet and um, also putting the stone inside into him as well. And there's your pair of Mr. and Mrs. Tomte already. Let's put him out of the way. Why? Imagine I made these um, all ready for Christmas um, to sit in front of your hot fire. And I think it's time to announce the winner. So, Alicia, do us the honours and I'll have a little read while I'm uh, waiting for Alicia to um, to find a lucky winner today for our on-the-go toolbox. And um, and that would be is a special treat. Um, let's see who's here. I haven't said hello yet. Oh, we've got... We have um, a winner and it's Bridget. Bridget, you're going to have this posted all the way out to um, Australia. So drop us a line, info at themakers.co.uk. Let us know that um, you've been the lucky winner and um, and we will get that on, on its way all the way to the other side of the world for you. That's amazing. Well done. And I have um, not a single minute left, but I wanted to see um, Pam, Pam's comment. Um, but she might not have said anything exciting anyway. So um, was there a Dogs Trust event coming up? Yes, Ashley, you do know this. So the dog the Dogs Trust, they they haven't they haven't made the um the link live yet. It will happen on the 4th of November. As soon as we have got it, I promise you, we you will be the first one to know. Um so um Yes, it won't even be uh, probably available on the 2nd. But uh, when I'm back here on the 9th, oh no, that's also a pre-record, the mini wreath. Anyway, we will let you know. Just watch out on our Facebook page and so on. And it will all be all be there ready for you. Um, <laughs> ah, <laughs> that was actually a funny comment. I think Pam worked out why, um, <laughs> why Mrs. Tomter's cheeks are flushed. They were blushed before the stone was inserted. So um, that's what I'm going to say. Um, oh, and Susan is coming to Shepton Mallet. Excellent. Um, and Shepton is happening after, uh, that's at the end of November. That's a, um, a specially put on show. They normally don't have a show in November, but with all this palaver, um, they've got an extra one. Um, okay. I think I'm going to leave it um, as that. And yeah, sorry, I just get I I get easily distracted by looking at um at um all the comments, but um yeah, so I I still love these. They're there's definitely still of my favorite Christmas makes, and um I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have making these. Do let us know um what um where let us know in pictures that you've made yours um, by popping them into everyone a maker our facebook group we are on instagram um you can tag us squiggly bit which is the at sign the makers with two s's and we're also on twitter but we usually use instagram and facebook that's sort of our main media um you can always email us our images we'd love to see them and if you give us permission we will share them on social media and um that's it from me today and um, I'll leave you with these two um, madly in love with each other and um, yeah tell us show us what you have made take care everybody I stop waffling now bye